Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God. First, giving all praises to God and thanking Him for this very moment. To um, Pastor Colleen, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. I concord. You said a couple of Sundays ago. <laughs> When pastor and co-pastors away is good, and then we think of, Lord, we be getting fed by pastor. We miss pastor. So, in the absence of our pastor, apostle chief, apostle Thomas Keys, co-pastor. Um, oh my God, I love co-pastors so much. And pastor says it all the time. Y'all love co-pastor more than y'all love me. But I do. She just, she's everything. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I have to admit, she's, she's everything. So I love you too, Pastor Rose. <laughs> yes, I do. But um, and to my family, to my husband, uh, this high school Sunday, y'all, we had a pep rally. Get ready. A pep rally for Jesus. Um, I want to say, now he has on a Huntington Raider shirt, but don't get it twisted. We are one. He's an Indian. He's wearing a Raider shirt, but that's okay. Because that's all he had. And, and that's where he teaches it every day. So he is an Indian fan. You know, an Indian. And to uh, my sons, all my sons that are in the back, um, and to the elders, uh, my elders, uh, Elder Timothy, Elder Shadrika, Elder Deal, all of uh, Elder, oh, Mother Keys and Elder Laney and Pastor Candy back there. All of you are all God's children. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. Well, let's do this. Let's start off by, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given and given unto us, O oh God, to come into your presence, O oh God, that we receive the word that you have given unto me, Lord God. Allow it to be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. It's another day's journey. And who's glad about it? Yes, yes. I will be coming from a very um, familiar passage of uh, scriptures. If you will stand while I will read the word of God to you. I will be coming from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy are with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepared a table in the before. Excuse me, that prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thy anointed my head with all. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will say, I will, I will. dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If I had to have a subject, which I, when God gave me this, it was such a blessing. See, he gives it to us first because he blesses our lives because we align with what he's telling us. Oh God. And if I had to have a subject, it would be, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? You all can be seated. The Lord is my shepherd i shall not want the word lord meaning master sir 
a title of respect. This title, Pastor Colleen, is used for both God the Father and God the Son. In Exodus 15 and 2, it starts out by saying, the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The next word we'll look at is shepherd. Hmm. Jesus is our good shepherd. For he fully is God. He's able to protect and guide us as believers through our daily lives. In John 10 and 11, is Jesus speaking to us. Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Well, let me bring it home to you. Here at RCBC, Jesus has placed Apostle Thomas King, Eugene Keys Jr. as our shepherd. We allude to him as Pastor Keys. And shepherds cares for their sheep by feeding, protecting, pasturing, and nurturing them in every way to point them to guarding them with his life. That, that's powerful. Very powerful. In John 21, 15 and 17, Jesus is talking to Simon Peter. He's asking him, Peter, Simon Peter, three times he asked him, do you love me? And he answered, Yay, Lord. But that third time seemed like Peter got a little irritated. And he said, Yeah, Lord, I love you. You know it's all things. He said, Well, feed my sheep. Well, I know I'm standing here today because Apostle Keys was in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the Lord sent him by way of Bolger City to feed Barbara his sheep. So we have to understand. God give us shepherds according to his heart. And the high calling of a pastor requires a great sense of the role of, of a pastor is accountability uh, to God for stewardship over his flock. Now, we notice in this, in this uh, passage that very first Versus what I really focused on that God gave me revelation, knowledge, divine understanding. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He said shall not want. And it says it in a different uh, stance when you read it in the New International Reading Version. It says the Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. We can take another look at another uh, version, the Amplified Version. It says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. Well, let's get into the Psalms. The Psalms, this particular Psalm, Psalms 23, let me just give you a little backdrop on Psalms. It's a collection of Hebrew songs written and sung for Israelites' uh, worship gatherings. The, the words that are in the Psalms are written by kings, priests, and poets expressing their exper experience with God. These people are honest with God about their pain and their sadness, but also their joy and praise. That reminds me on fourth Sunday, uh, Pastor Keys give us an opportunity to write out what it is that we are asking God for and have us to place them in that box. Well, God brought that to my mind when I was writing and and he was releasing 
the word into my spirit. We are people that have pain and sadness know that joy comes in the morning. While we read the Psalms to help us with our own response to God, if we had to use a word to describe the book of Psalms, uh, we certainly could start by saying praises. Praises. Praises definitely qualify for there is no Psalm that does not contain an element of praise. In our hearts, Timothy just, Elder Timothy just was praising God through that song. The song brought comfort, encouragement, blessings to God's people throughout all ages, inclusive to where we are today. The praise team bring praises unto the people of God. The Lord is my shepherd is a song of praise that many gospel artists have already written about. Every human being, no matter who you are, have emotions. Your emotions are covered in the songs. They are hymns of aspirations to God. We have those that write those songs, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You can find that in the song. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and all thy mind. All. So Psalm 23 is from the first book of the five songs. That book consists of 41 songs. The five books total consist of 150. Thank you, Mother Keys. Now, Mother Keys, the one who <laughs> I got to give her thanks publicly because when I was sitting down and God was ministering to me about this, he brought Mother Keys to my mind. Because Mother Keys, for you all don't know, Mother Keys was the one that taught us in MIT ministers uh, uh, training. And uh, I know I was a work in progress, but um, Mother Keys, I think you'll be proud. And I want to say publicly today <laughs> Thank you for all that you have done that you've instilled through me uh, in this journey called life. Now, this particular psalm that I, I am coming from was written by David. The Bible tells us David was a man after God's own heart. There are authors besides David that that's written in the psalm. You have Moses, you have Ethan, you have Asaph, those just to name a, a few that's there. But the Holy Spirit gave me this particular uh, scripture. In fact, in fact, this is one of the psalms that I read every morning daily before I start my day because it reminds us, it reminds me who leads and guides me, who is the Lord over my life. This book, the Bible, is about God's divine recovery plan for his people. We're taught what the Bible stands for, its acronym stand for, is basic instructions before leaving earth. Well, let's just take a look at why David called the Lord his shepherd. See, in Acts 13 and 22, and when he, meaning the Lord, had removed him, Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Now you may ask, who is, who is David? Who is David? David was the youngest son of Jesse. He became the second king of Israel and was an ancestor to Jesus Christ. And that verse 23 of Acts in the 13th chapter, it says, of this man, 
seed had God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. Psalm 89 and 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. In the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, the Lord is speaking to Samuel, asking him, how long will you mourn Saul? Seeing that I have rejected him reigning over Israel. So God said to Samuel, fill your all and go. And he was sending him to Jesse that among Jesse sons, he had the next king. Samuel answered, God, how can I go? Don't that sound like some of us? When God gives an assignment, we say, we want to overthink it and say what it is that we need to do. But know that God has already got it. He know the end before the beginning. Just be obedient and do as he tells you to do. And God already expected that answer from um Samuel, by the way, so I'm just telling you, hint, hint, he already expected it when he gave you that assignment. He already expect you to say, well, uh, I don't know what, how, what, when, how. He already know that. So God, God said to, to Samuel, he said, the Lord said, take a heifer. And take it and tell them that you're going to sacrifice it to him. And you call Jesse to the sacrifice and I'll show you what to do. See, Samuel was too busy worried about Saul wanting to kill him. But how many of you know when God is for you, who can be against you? Because when God is for you, who can be against you because if he said it and he told you to do it then you do it because you should have an expected end to know that it's going to end for your glory for his glory it's going to be good for you but i don't think we as people stand and say we believe but do you truly believe and trust when he tell you to do something samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. The elders of the town trembled, the Bible said, as his coming, asking Samuel, was he coming peacefully? Oh, how many of y'all, if y'all walk in the room, people in the room start trembling because they know that there's power and glory on you? That they know that God's hand is up on you? That you know that his face shined up on you? And they're trembling and wondering, oh, what is he or she walking in? What what's going on? What what's this this and these were believers that were trembling. So when he came in, they were trembling as he was coming. Samuel, I wanted to know. I said, Well, Lord, show me these people, believers, and they trembling when um, Samuel coming in, and it says. When I was reading, it said Samuel's birth was an answered prayer of his parents. His mother, Hannah, promised God she would give her child back to him when he was born. So at two years old, she gave Samuel to the uh, high priest, Eli, which Samuel was the Lord called him. Even after that, her obedience Samuel was a prophet and a judge that he led Israel back to serving God. Amen. Samuel was the one who warned the Israelite people not to worship idol gods or even ask for a king, but they did anyway. They asked for a king and Samuel was the one who anointed Saul. And that's why he was grieving because he anointed him and God had, if his time had reigned, God had rejected him. It was time to move to the new king, which is David. So David, the second king. And it says Samuel had a life that characterized him as being honesty, honest and fair. 
Samuel answered them back peacefully and said, uh, he come to sacrifice unto the Lord. And so he told them, sanctify yourself and come with me to a sacrifice. Samuel sanctified Jesse and his son, and he called them to the sacrifice. The Bible then says that Samuel looked up at Elibi, which is Jesse's oldest son, saying that he knoweth the Lord anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not at his countenance. Don't look at his facial expression, appearance, or height of his stature, because God refused the oldest son. My God. How many times we look at someone and, and think we can make a, a judgment on them? The Bible tells us the Lord sees not like man seeth. God judges the heart. Man usually go by what somebody else done told them. Or either just observing on the outside, don't know the inside. So it tells us man's looked at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Bible said, says Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have, uh, are these all your children? Uh, do you have any other children? Jesse said, there remaineth the youngest. He keepeth the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. The Bible says, Samuel said, we will not sit down till he come. Now, I want to say right there, David was chosen, chosen by God. And he was, Samuel was sent by God to anoint the next king. And when I was looking at it, I was like, how powerful that is. Because when you go back and God show you uh, we are chosen and it has to be who he put in place before you that can come and anoint. And it made me think about uh, Elder Shadrika, uh, Elder Timothy, our ordination, how God had apostle keys to lay his hands up on us. This is what is showing us here that God sent Samuel to anoint David. David was minding his own business. I don't know about you, uh, Elder Shadrick. I was minding my own business. And God, he wouldn't, and how much respect and honor is that to God when Samuel said they will not sit down till he come? That's a level of respect. To what God sent him on assignment. That's how we should be when God sent us on assignment. We don't sit down on it. We move on it. We act on it. Exodus 14 and 14. And then when I looked at the point from, from, from David, God, Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Now, remember the Bible said, David was a man after God's own heart, right? So that tells me in Exodus 14 and 14, by God knowing his heart, God was fighting for him. David was at peace doing the sheep like he was told to do. And God said, go and anoint because he's after his heart. Don't you know, God, no, you are a chosen. I guess y'all not chosen because I'm chosen. I guess y'all not chosen because I'm chosen. The Bible said when David showed up, he was a ruddy, meaning reddish complexion, and with all of beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for this is he. Samuel took the horn of all and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. 
and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who people say you are. As long as God has chosen you, you speak what God has said unto you to do. Now, David is remembered for many adventures, such as killing the giant uh, Philistine with the slingshot. David was faithful friendship with Jonathan and refusing to get revenge against King Saul. I mean, all was all this was written in first Samuel. David is also. Let's look at this. David was also known as disobedient against God, such uh, such as having sex with Ur Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. We all know the story, which in, in, which ended up her getting pregnant and that David uh, put Uriah on the uh, front line so he could be killed, so he could marry uh, Bathsheba. But yet and still, the Bible says David is a man after God's own. David's sin hurt both him and his family. Uh, David wrote songs about both his disobedient action and his obedient action. We see those in the songs. His sin created people problems from generations, and David was not permitted to build the temple which David loved. David reigned 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron, 33 years in Jerusalem. David was 30 years old when he was anointed king. That's 2 Samuel uh, 5, 4, and 5. God will give his believers a quantum leap. Abrupt change, sudden increase, or dramatic adv advancement. Do you not understand? Um, we, we're on um, high school Sunday. And when God gave me this very scripture, now don't get me wrong, Psalms 23 is a passage of scriptures that you can preach every single scripture in there. And it is compared all throughout the Psalms. You can find whatever. But what God gave me was the focus on this first verse. Why was it that why was David saying that he was his shepherd? Well, I, I stand before you to tell you that he's my shepherd. He's my Lord. And since it's high school Sunday, I'm just going to be uh, transparent to let you know the walk, the walk that I had to walk, that God, that I know that I was God's chosen one. I, I remember walking the halls past the candy of the Indian land. <laughs> uh, freshman year, uh, Miss Maxill class, she taught civic enterprise and and. I love government. That's why I learned the tears of government. I love it. I, I, I love politics, but you don't know me. I love uh, politics. And so she taught uh, us the preamble. She taught us everything uh, to do with government. But I, one thing she made us learn was the alma mater for Fair Park. And so every day, you had to say it coming one by one in the class. Hell, Fair Park High School, hear your praises ring. Now, I'm going to make you ever seen through thy high pounds. Of the <laughs> we fight, fight, fight for all that's right. So we had to do that. We had to, to, to learn that. And as my high school years went, I ended up pregnant at 14, delivered at 15. Here I am wanting to be able to graduate with my class, but I had gotten behind. But what happened was, 
Exodus 14 and 14 comes into place. How many of you know God's fighting for you and putting people in place for you to receive what he has for you? So the principal, Mr. Roland Antoine, he came to me and he said, young lady, I know you want to graduate with your class. Uh, we've came up with this new program that... Uh, if you can pass this test, then you can walk with your class. This test is known as the GED. And I said, I was happy. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Him and Mr. Festivan, the assistant prince, I was like, yes, yes. He said, well, just get your parent, uh, one of your parents to sign the paper, and uh, we, we're good. Well, I went home that day. I was the parent, y'all. I signed that paper. <laughs> I was the parent. I signed that paper because I didn't want mother them to get discouraged and all of that. So I signed that paper and I took it back. And um, weeks later, we, we had to, you know, take the test. And I took the test, passed everything but math. Well, the principal come to me again, and he says, listen. Now, that wasn't, but he came, but it was God sending him. He said, I have some good news, and I have some bad news. And I said, okay. He said, the good news is you can take the math part over, and if you pass the math part, then you can uh, graduate. I was like, yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, now, what's the bad boy? And he said, <laughs> he said, well, the not so good news is you won't get a class T-shirt, your name won't be on the senior list, and you won't take uh, class pictures. And I looked at him, I said, and that's it? <laughs> and he said, yes. And I said, so I'll get a cap and gown, and I'm going to march with my class. He said, yes. I said, okay, then. Yeah. So took the math part, passed it. But let me tell you, God was fighting for me. I was so excited. But when I got to graduation, I was so excited. But when I got to graduation, I got so sad because I had a classmate there that had her cap and gown, had taken the school picture, had her cap and gown, and participated in the class trip, did everything, but couldn't walk across the stage. I tell you, understand, my heart was grieved even though I made it across the stage. She didn't make it across the stage. And it got opened my eyes when I was sitting here uh, writing my uh, sermon for today. He was giving it to me. That could have been me. It could have been me. So we have to be grateful to understand, even when we're minding our business that God has placed us in, that we're, he's going to take care of us no matter what it is. And fast forward, when I, I laugh at this story all the time, Pastor Carly, and I told you about this. Pastor was up preaching one Sunday, and he said, well, when I went to, first went to college, I flunked out, and I laughed so hard, and he said, but I've got my degree. Well, I told Pastor Colleen I was laughing so hard because when I got to Northwestern, when I got to college, I flunked out. <laughs> so I was like, I'm laughing because I'm like, I ain't the only one. And so, and so being that God brought me through that when I when God showed me the desires that he had placed in me to become who he has called me to be as Dr. Barbara. And this thing is, is, is so deep because when I went, when I did find, make, make up my mind and really understand that, um, Hey, 
I do want a college degree. With this being high school Sunday, yes, we all want degrees, but the most important thing in our lives is to have Jesus Christ to secure our eternity. Education is good, but if you have education without him, you have nothing. You have nothing. So when I was sitting in, in the class at Southern, it was a speech class. And you know how they make you write the different course, uh, different papers on persuasive speech and all of that. So thank you, Lord, for uh, Joc Jocelyn Pickens right now. She's Dr. Pickens now. She's Southern. She was my instructor. And I had to, you know, I don't like to do a lot of speaking, but we had to write the paper. And I wrote this paper. And this paper was from my heart. And I wrote about... One day I will be at Government Plaza and I would uh, get a call that I would be flying to uh, Washington, D.C. to go to the president inauguration. Now, mind you, this is way years, years ago. Right. And I wrote that paper and, and I and I truly believe that paper. And so. God is good, y'all. I end up having a friend to call me and say, hey, how would you like to go to President Obama's inauguration, private plane, flew out of Alexandria? What I wrote on that paper, God, manif it manifested out. So I'm here to say, I know the Lord is my shepherd that I shall not want because every school that I went to after that, it was a breeze because he was leading me and guiding me. And I stand before you to say, having Jesus as your Lord and savior, doors were open that you would never, can, you can't get open. And also doors are closed that need to be closed if you allow him to be the Lord of your life. I experienced coming from uh, a 14 year old delivering at 15, getting a GED, being a college graduate from four different colleges. All that don't matter. Jesus. It is all about Jesus that leads and guide us in our daily walk. Our daily walk, our lives should be transparent. You, you, you shouldn't hide. Your life is transparent. People look at your life. You don't know who's watching you. So we have to walk in integrity. Walk in the authority that God has given us. Walk in the power. You know, you God had me looking at, you know, how people have power but all power don't come from God some power is corrupt so you got to have discerning and one of my prayers is always God surround me with the right people with the right people so that I can get to the levels that you have already ordained see he already was ordaining David to be king Amen. he know he goes just think about it if god would tell us what he has for us then it'll be like oh how am i get there how am i how am i no i ain't gonna be somebody somebody up in him to talk they self out of being a millionaire Amen. because you won't just follow the simple direction that god has given you just follow the simple direction and he taught me in writing that speech it was from my heart now I didn't know was it gonna ever come to pass but he showed me to let me know I manifest my word I place my desire in you that you will know and see and that you will have a testimony to my goodness so God is good and he shows up when he's supposed to show up if we allow him to lead us every day. 
every single day. Proverbs 15 and 3 says, this, this is, listen closely to what Proverbs 15 and 3 says. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. They watch those who are evil, are evil, and those who are good. So that tells you right there that guess what happens? God sees everything. So your life should be transparent. Your life should be transparent. Because God sees and knows all things. What did he tell Peter? He kept asking Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yeah, Lord. He said, well, feed my sheep. Every psalm is a praise. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all our ways, we should acknowledge him because he's with us, never leaving nor forsaking us. Never. Even when we're in a valley, he's with us. So we are sitting in heavenly places. We are sitting. We are walking epistles. People are watching us. When you was riding down that street and that car cut off in front of you, what'd you say? What'd you say? Are you able to repeat it? <laughs> I'm just asking because, see, I used to be that person. <laughs> so Everywhere we go, people are watching us to see. God is trying to see who it is that he's going to anoint. Some of us are full of fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, God did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. That's what he gave us. As believers, as believers, that's what he gave us to stand on his word, to stand on who he has called each of us to be. Because you do know each of us sitting in here, people are assigned to us. They, they may look at you, Pastor Candy, before they look at me. What do they see? Because, see, sometimes people play church on Sunday. But what happened Monday through Saturday? What happened when I don't see you? What, what's going on then? Because it matters. Because God sees you. That's what, what counts. See, you making fool man. But you can't fool God. You have to walk and what God has called you to walk in. No, David wasn't perfect, but, but remember, what did God say? He was a man after his own heart. Is, is, is God saying that about you all? I know he's saying it about me because I stay before him, Lord, with a spirit of repentance in a spirit of forgiveness. Let me tell you something. Forgiveness... <laughs> People say they forgive, but when God tests them, they fail. Because you have to have a forgiving spirit. Let, let me just go over here. I just, can I y'all just for a minute just read to you what the word says in Mark 11? Mark 11 says, Mark 11, I'm going to do 23 and. I'm just going to, can I just do 23 through 26? Is that all right with y'all? I'm going to do it anyway. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, 
Did y'all hear me? I'm going to repeat that because I need you to understand what, what Jesus is saying here. Therefore, I say unto you what things soever ye desire. Y'all remember that desire I had to go to fly to the to the White House, to go to the inauguration. That was a desire that God had placed into me. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So some of us pray, but we don't believe that we have what we said that we prayed for. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So, if you ain't forgive Sally or Billy Bob for what they done done, you might as well quit praying because God ain't finna answer you. His word says forgive, forgive. And God dealt with that. And he dealt with me in a way that I know I did not do nothing to this lady. I know I didn't. But he said to me, no, you're going to call her. And you're going to talk to her. And I was like, Lord, I want to move on, y'all. So I was obedient. I called. And when I called, and I, this, is, this is a childhood friend from whoa, way back. And I know I never done anything to her. But I called her, and she answered. And she tried to pretend she didn't know who I was. <laughs> and so... When I told her, I went ahead and told her who I was, which I knew she knew who I was. And so she says, oh, how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. How are you? I said, well, listen, I want to know if it's anything that I have done to you. And if so, I want to ask you sincerely for forgiveness. And she said to me, oh, I sleep at night. I don't know what you're talking about. And so I said, so you're saying that I haven't done anything to you. But y'all, all those years, her demeanor towards me were so negative and nasty. I know that I didn't do anything, but I, God had to show me. Sometimes you keep being who you are and be the bigger person. It'll help them. And since that conversation, what little I put on social media, she's liking it and amen. But I know the word says forgive. And some, and I needed to, so I said, well, you know, I hadn't done nothing to her. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you don't have to do nothing to anybody. They just won't like you. They just won't like you. So you keep being who and and thank you, Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's something within them that's needing deliverance. And they're crying out in a way that it, they are uh, crying out how they treat you. So we have to have spirit of discernment. So even after that call, I thank God and I pray for her. Because sometimes God gives me people to pray for that I don't even talk to every day. But guess what? He chose me for that. He chose me to intercede. So God is good. And I want to say to you all today. When God calls you to an assignment, no matter who is against you, know he is for you. And how you know that you truly love, when you have the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, long-suffering, you have the love of God, you can love them in spite of the treatment. You can love them in spite 
spite of the things that they have done to you. Because see, some of the things they have done to you, you don't even know, but God shield you and protect you. Goes back to uh the goes back to uh when it says the Lord is my shepherd to feed God and shield. He shields us from some things that we don't even know that people are doing, the fiery darts at us. He don't even let us know. He don't even allow us to because he loves us so much that he wants us to show that love to the people. If you have everything else and not charity, what does the Bible tell us? Amen. Could you say it a little louder? Profits you nothing. So we have to love in spite of. We have to love. The good shepherd loved us that he laid down his life. So who is your Lord? Some people make their Lord their house, their car, their money. The good shepherd. We as believers understand and know who it is that lead and guide us. Who it is that we stand on his word. In season and out of season. Even when people want to hear it and don't want to hear it. That is our commission. Wherever we go. Every day. Every day, and I'm going to tell you, God will test you on it because I've been some places that I said, okay, God, I know I'm yours, but help me because I want to act up, but I don't because who's in me controls me. That's one of those fruits of the uh, spirit, temperance. So temperance, I said, okay, God, now he had to work on me a little while now. That's okay because guess what? Just as David, he said, was a man after his heart. He knows our hearts, but you know, we have to be tested, proven and tried to move as God has us to move. In John 15 and 17, I'll close with this. John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and I abide in you, it's nothing. It's nothing we can ask for because he's given it all to us. It's up to us to receive what it is that he has for us. I pray that this word enhance your directions and lead you to Jesus even more so. Amen. Amen.